that's it fp4 shot so i've just shot all those films and uh <laughs> it's definitely just seems so repetitive you know everything <laughs> just looked the same in that woods hi guys and welcome back to my channel today i'm in the woods and uh am i lost well someone's already asked me if i've seen bluebells i said well one mate i'm shooting black and white and two and lost anyway so uh he trotted off but i've come up to the woods to shoot various films in the woods today i've got a bit of time on my hands so i thought i'd come up and shoot uh five different films in the woods and get back and see how they perform for me you know that way i can write my notes down and say to myself oh that one weren't too bad the weather today is nice it's uh it's cloudy up there so the sun's in and out so i'm going to be looking for variations of mottled look and also you know where the sun's coming down and, and highlighting stuff and also shade as well so um, i'm going to spend a few hours in these woods milling around and i'll show you guys some of the pictures as i go along so today i've brought out with me the bronica etrs obviously i've got my light meter i've got it on a tripod as well i've got a 50 mil lens on there i've got my cable release and i've also got another prism as well where i can look down in case i'm doing lower down shots look it's tilting upwards so i can shoot portrait mode just look down it nice and simple um, the films i've brought out with me is I bought out a roll of Ilford Delta 100 professional film. A solid film is Ilford FP4, very solid film. I've got Ilford Ortho as well, an orthochromatic film. It's not sensitive to the upper scale of the reds, if you like. So if you're going to take photographs of anything red, it's going to come out pretty dark or black, like a red letterbox or a, marmal um, or a jam jar or something. <laughs> I don't know where that come from, but anyway. I've also bought out a roll of uh, Fuji Acros 2. Not a cheap film by any, any means, but um, it's a nice film, and I'm certainly gonna give it a go today and see how we get on. And I've also bought out some people's favorite Foma Pan 100. Hopefully I've got no emulsion problems on this film. Otherwise, um, <laughs> I'll show you later on anyway. But the latter of these films, you know, you can overexpose or underexpose a couple of stops and you're gonna get away with it. And also the dynamic range of these films is fantastic. So there's no really, Maybe the foam of Pan 100, I don't know. And I don't know what's going on with me lately. For the last few months, I've had a frozen shoulder and it's got worse. I had x-rays on it the other day, so hopefully that's gonna get better. But it doesn't stop me, you know, moving this way. I just can't move my arm that way too much. So um, getting me bag on me, on me and my clothes on and stuff like that. And also my left knee started to give way. My photographer knee, the one I'm always bending up and down on. That started to hurt a lot lately. So um, I've fallen apart, guys. And this is the Bronica ETRS that I've bought out today. Medium format, uh, 645 camera. That's what I'm gonna be shooting and later on in the video we'll have a look at the negatives i'll put them all in the light box um, before i start cutting them down and you guys can see for yourselves uh, the densities of the actual negatives so and i'll show you a few scans along the way and maybe i might do a, a couple of prints as well i'm not going to go in the dark room and, and set all the video gear up in the dark room but if i do do any prints i'll show you guys some of the prints i can't get up oh you shithead pull my microphone off so I'm starting off with the Ilford Ortho 80. I'm going to put my light meter 80 ISO. And do you know what? I've done exactly the same thing as what I did in the church the other week. I couldn't see my bloody camera. I forgot my reading glasses. I got my glasses. Oh, no. I just haven't got my glasses. I can't see what I'm doing. I think that's F8. So not only have I got a frozen shoulder dodgy knee, I can't see either. <laughs> Simple incident reading. I've got, it's got this nice little tree here. I think you see it. I like the way that was where I was standing on the introduction there. I just like the way the tree sort of is kind of going like this, you know. So uh, just take a quick meter reading. Let's give me F8 at one fourth of a second. So uh, we're not in the reciprocity failure range at all. One fourth of a second. I've got the camera tilted into portrait mode. So that's what I'm going to be shooting. Let's take the shot, one fourth of a second, F8. And I've got this uh, prism, you see. Look, it's tilting upwards, so I can shoot portrait mode and just look down it nice and simple. And this isn't as bad as when I was at the church. I was shooting on a Yashica mat, and those numbers are really small. And uh, I couldn't see them, but these numbers are a bit bigger. Right, let's take this shot, nice and simple. Take the dark slide out. Contrast is a little bit flat, but hopefully the sun will come out at some point. Shot done. Now this could be interesting on that ortho film. I found this sandy area. I think this part is, uh, they've got like lumps and bumps and stuff in the ground. So I reckon this is where kids come on their bikes and do some stunts. I'd love to come around here when I was a kid, I tell you. But we've got this sandy color. It's kind of like an orangey reddy color. So that'll be interesting to see how the ortho film picks that up. And 
it should come out pretty dull. The sun's just come out, so it's quite bright. Oh, everybody wants to rule the world's just come on me, on me headphones on a playlist, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So here's another little trick for you. Uh, when you're coming out taking photographs, you take your little note uh, pad with you and your pen to write your shutter speeds and apertures down. Get yourself a little tiny recorder. I mean, I'm using this one for the videos. It's a Tascam uh, DR10L, it's called. This is a little lavia mic here. Um, but there's plenty of these really cheap little handy recorders, you know, for like 20, 30 quid. Or do it on your phone if you've got a phone recorder and uh, shot one, XX, shot two, XX, shot three, XX, you get the idea. When I get back and edit, I know exactly what my exposures were because I'm talking to myself all the time in here. I'm always talking to myself. Like this tree stump here, I'm still in that sandy part. I just like this little tree stump here. Take a shot, meter that back up. What's that looking like? Yeah, that should be okay. 5.6, one thirtieth of a second, that'll do. Change the aperture to 5.6, I don't mind that. A bit of depth of field going on. I'm still at one thirtieth. Done. I'm just waiting for the sun to come back over there. One of the hardest things when the sun is in and out of the clouds, when you're in a woodland, is when you're metering up, and all of a sudden, the sun goes in a cloud and it changes, and it's all well and good. You could sit there and say, okay, I'll wait for the sun to come back out and take me shot, I've already metered. But you don't know if, the, if, if it's a heavier cloud or a lighter cloud, so the light is changing constantly all the time with these clouds up there going over, and it's making it really, really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you just wish you bought a camera with, with, a, with a light meter inside, you know. So what I'm going to do guys is put the camera in my bag and a tripod on my back and walk around these woods and try and get my shots done. Um, I've nearly shot the ortho film, I'll show you the remainder, the remainder of those images and I'll show you a few snippets as I go along shooting the remaining films but most importantly I'll show you the negatives at the end so you guys can uh, see the negatives after developing. I'm going to be developing them normally, I'm going to develop the film, all the films in Xtol um, at the recommended times so I'm not flapping around with pulling or pushing or anything like that, I'm just going to go for the recommended times and then we'll lay the negatives down on a light box and uh, have a look at the densities on them and see what look like more people coming I'll think I'm mental I'm gonna try the Acros 100 and uh, I'm gonna run around take me photographs I'll show you what the Acros 100 gives me So that's a few jackross done. See that guy on the bike? I was having a good old chat with him. <laughs> he let me take his photograph as well. I don't know how that's come out. You guys obviously know because you've seen it. That's the jackross done. Next up, let's take some shots with the foma pan. Now the light, the sun, the sun has kind of pretty much gone. So um, I'm kind of trying to find as much um, nice, <laughs> nicely lit scenes as I can. There's no point in shooting scenes which is dull with no light. It's just to come out dull. So I'm trying to find scenes around me that um, have got some nice light. I, I can't even see what the clouds are doing up there. It's so dense in this uh, forest. <laughs> but um, I can see where there's light. So I'm just looking for shots where they're not going to be looking as flat and dull, you know? I 
I've got two fields left, FP4 and Delta 100. Let's put the Delta 100 in and I'll show you those pictures now. So all along this little journey in the woods I've been in here, like I said, for a few hours, I've been looking for scenes that have got a little bit of light coming through. Like this tree here, you know, it's just got that nice little bit of soft light on it. And uh, I've got to change the ISO to 125, there you go. And that's even, oh, my frozen shoulder's killing me, that's even hurting with a light meter doing that. <laughs> okay. 5.6, 1 15th of a second. So this is pretty much what I've been doing all the way along this shoot, give or take a few hits. And this little prism here is well handy. Look, it flips around so I can shoot in portrait mode. Sorted. When I'm listening to music, people often ask me, what are you listening to? I've got uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips at the moment. He's leaving on that midnight train. Georgia, that song. <laughs> it's just a playlist. So I ended the shoot with one of my favourite films, the FP4. I mixed a lot of my photographs, as you can see, with various apertures and various contrast detail where I was metering for incident and also spot metering too. And as I said earlier, the light was forever changing all the time. So I found myself clutching at straws with my exposures and I was happy to see that they turned out okay. But what about the differences with all the films? I was expecting the biggest difference to be the ortho film, especially on that sandy part of the forest, but I could hardly see any difference at all, except maybe a little bit more heavy in the shadow areas, as you can see here. The Fomapan 100 film had a good game, and the Acros I was expecting to be a bit more far heavy in contrast. There wasn't that much difference to the FP4. With the Delta film, I was expecting to see a bit less contrast, and that was the case. And overall, all of these films performed well in the conditions. If we look at the negatives I developed, you can see all the various exposures that I took. And again, all very similar, except I would say the Fomapan and Acros negatives could have had a stop more light. So maybe next time, if I shoot these two films, I'll try shooting them both at 50 ISO instead of 100. Now this wasn't a side-by-side -side comparison and in no way a hardcore test of these films. I just wanted to take some photographs in the forest with a few different films and see for myself how they turned out. And I must say, all these films performed well and I'll come back with some nice photographs. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you next time.